Now purging is a real critical step in the process. What you're going to be doing with a power ventilator is setting it up to bring fresh air from top side of the hole into the hole and purging or blasting out any contaminated air, any dead air, or any air that contains combustible, combustible gases. Get it out of there so you can work safely. Two things to remember about purging. Your purge time is very important. You want to make sure that you allow enough time to purge that hole properly. And that's based on two factors, the size of the hole and the size of the blower that you're using. Some companies use charts that enable their technicians to quickly evaluate the necessary purge time. And others use the standard rule of thumb of 20 minutes for the initial purge and a standard one chimney manhole. So either way, follow your company practice. If you've got charts to use, by all means use them. If not, again, that safe rule of thumb is 20 minutes on your initial purge for a single chimney hole. If you get into additional chimneys, cut that initial time in half. For example, your first chimney would be 20 minutes, a second one would be 10, a third one would be 10, so forth, so on. Also very important when you're purging to limit the number of 90 degree bends in your blower hose. What you're going to be doing is taking that blower hose into the hole or placing it into the hole from top side with the end of the hose a foot or two above the basement, base of the, of the manhole. Limit the bends, the 90 degree bends, to one. And that's very important. When you put a 90 degree bend in your blower hose, you're reducing the effective cubic foot per minute output of your blower by about 30%. So say if you were using a 1,000 CFM cubic foot per minute blower, with 190 in there, it's equivalent to using a 700 CFM blower. So again, limit it to 190 degree bend. So we're purging. We've got the 190. The end of the hose is about a foot or two above the, the hole, the floor of the hole, purging out any contaminants. The 20 minutes goes by. Now we're going to retest prior to entry. And what you're going to do is actually, again, with the gas track, bring it into the hole. Bring it into the hole with you. Our initial test from top, middle, and bottom showed no, any, no indication of gas. You've been purging for at least 20 minutes, and now you can go into the hole with the gas track. And you're going to do an, an additional series of tests that we call the sniff testing, utilizing our probe again. Bring this with you into the hole, place the coupler over the sensor, and now sniff test all four corners top for any gases that might be lighter than air, and all four corners low for any gases that might be heavier than air. For example, methane is a gas that is lighter than air, and it could get trapped in pockets, especially when it's very muggy or very humid, or if these holes are located near steam lines. So again, test all four corners, six sniffs each corner for gases lighter than air, all four corners low for gases heavier than air, like propane, for example, is heavier than air. Now let's just say in this particular demonstration, we're testing this corner up here. We do our sniff, uh, six sniffs, and we've got an indication. We've got the tick rate increasing, which I shut off, by the way, so you could hear me a little bit better. But we've got an increase in the tick rate along with an indication of either slight, medium, or alarm on the, on the, auto, on the visual signals. What we think now is we've got a pocket of gas. Again, they can get trapped in a hole when it's very muggy or if we're near steam. So take your blower hose, aim it at that pocket of gas for a minute or two, try and dislodge it. Retest, six sniffs, and if you've got no indication of gas now, you know you successfully dislodged that pocket and it's safe to work. If you still have an indication of gas after your sniffs, presume you have a problem and exit the hole. Also, if you've got any open duct work, or you're going to open a duct, very important to use the probe. Get the probe into the duct as far as you can and do your sniff tests. You could have gas in the duct work or in the conduits. You never know. This, this manhole could be near an old gas station whose t uh, tanks have begun to leak. It may be located near a dump. Dumps generate methane. So again, utilize the probe, 
Get it in the ductwork as far as you can and do your sniff test. Let's assume that all of those tests were negative, no indication of any gas. You're still in the purge mode. Now what you should do is take the gas track, hang it in the hole at about head height. You can now rearrange your blower hose to the ventilate mode. Now you're allowed to have up to two 90 degree bends in the hose. Take the end of the hose, aim it at a side or a rear wall so you've got a nice circulation of fresh air in the hole. That's called convection. Consequently, you've got a nice circulation of air being looked at by your sensor, providing you protection from any changes in the atmosphere. This should remain hanging at head height the whole time that you're working. If that 15 minute time period I mentioned earlier goes by and the unit shuts off, just simply turn it back on again. Because the sensor is already warmed up, it won't go through that routine. It'll go right to the ready light, indicating to you that it's ready to go and it is providing the protection that you need. So remember, while you're in the hole, leave this hanging at head height. Leave your ventilator going the whole time you're in the hole. If this goes into an alarm condition, follow your company practices. Get out of the hole immediately.